Hollis, what's your question for today about rocks? So my question is, we're going back to the basics. How do crystals grow? I want to show you a geo to start with because it's the best example. Um, you got to think there's cavities uh, that form in the earth and the crystals form inside. That's kind of our basic starting point is you have a negative space that the crystals are growing in. So, and there's different types of crystals. First, I'm starting with the silica family, but uh, calcites grow like this very frequently too. Um, there's things like the feldspar family, uh, which will grow a little bit differently. Usually when volcanic activity cools, the crystals separate out as the, um, the lava cools. So you get magma when it's still under the earth and when it's extruded, it is lava. So even if it's under the earth or above, if at any point that uh, molten rock cools, the, the rock will separate. Um, let's get, let's jump right into it though. So when I talk about like lava or anything cooling realistically, um, feldspar was one version, but in another form you get uh, different viscosities in the lava. Some is really, really slow moving. Um, and when that happens, it can trap a lot of the gas because it's very, very thick. The gas bubbles can't escape to the surface. Some is very, very liquid. Um, and so we talk about that in viscosity terms, right? But basically what happens is at any point if you get those gas bubbles trapped, it's kind of like barbecue rock on a larger scale where you have these massive cavities. Um, if it's formed by volcanic activity, we'll call it a vesicle. If it's any other kind of hole in the earth, we call it a vug, uh, uh, which is kind of like Vuga, named after the tin mining era in England. The miners go in and um, into what they call Vugas for their tin. And so now whether it's this big or something you actually walk into, a cavity in the earth that large, vug or a vesicle. So uh, in our volcanic activity, when we get those gas pockets trapped, uh, the magma cools and we get, again, all those porous voids throughout it. Well, um, sediment, all kinds of things bury it and go on top, but eventually the gas finds its way out and water finds its way in. But not just water, you get something called the siliceous solution or any other kind of elements could um, end up in suspension in the water. So the way to think about that suspension term is when you melt or dissolve, sorry, uh, uh, sugar in water or salt in water, it just sort of disappears, but it's still in there. Same concept with silica, right? One of the most abundant elements on the Earth's surface is silica. So when you get something like the, let's show the crystals. Here are the geodes. When you get something like a quartz family, this is silica dioxide, right? Just a plain white crystal, silica and oxygen bonds, one silica to oxygen. When we get something like the amethyst, we toss some iron into that mix and it starts turning purple. But it doesn't just do that on its own. It actually has to be irradi irradiated by the earth, the natural radiation that's just happening all around us. Same with smoky quartz, which is black. You get aluminum tossed into that silica dioxide mix. So where I'm going with how crystals grow is eventually that siliceous solution percolates into the cavity um, and it fills it. And it's not really watery at that point. It's almost like a gel, right? Which is why um, you usually get the whole cavity coated. Sometimes you'll see like waterline agates, something like this, which I will try and remember to talk about later, where we actually see um, the whole cavity was being covered and then lines after. Let me jump kind of back to this later and I'll explain that further. So anyway, you got to imagine a gas bubble is usually round nodular. So when, we, when I just grab this agate, actually I'm going to jump back to it right now. These agate slices are out of a round ball, something that would have uh, basically been the cast of a gas bubble cavity. Same with these geodes, same with all these. We're going over here, Hollis. So same with all these. These are a cavity formed by a gas bubble that eventually got filled in. Now what happens is that a siliceous solution is in there and eventually it starts precipitating out. That's the other science term you want to know. So precipitation is when the solid drops out of the liquid and it starts coating the sidewalls and it starts working its way inward. So why grab those agate slices before those, I'll just grab it again to show you if anyone doesn't know, agate slices like these is because there's not really that much of a difference between these and our hollow geodes. Um, the main difference is that this is a macrocrystalline structure when we can visually see, let's come over here and get a nice shot in, when we can visually see the actual crystals on our mammalian sensory level, like as humans we see that, we don't need a microscope, macrocrystalline, whereas something like this, microcrystalline, which means we need a microscope to see the crystal structure, both technically crystals. Um, 
Fun fact about crystals, the only other crystals other than the ones at Earth would be snowflakes. Isn't that fun? Oh. Right. Uh, so anyway, when we talk about the, the crystals growing, I'm not 100% on what conditions cause either or. I think it's because of the um, quantity of silica in the solution. Because a lot of the times on agate slabs, uh, you'll see agate, 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 and then it finishes with crystals. And, you'll, and I can grab a sample for you in a minute here and show you. But what I'm getting at is as that precipitation is occurring and the solids are dropping out, it's growing from the outside in. And it's not something that happens instantaneously. This is like, like geological timeline for that to happen. Um, and you get all these different bandings that occur, bandings and agates we call fortification. Let me jump over here and show you one. I'm sure all my best ones have been purchased by now, but this actually looks like a good sample. Fortification, right? We call it banded agate. Fun fact, when we refer to onyx, it's something where their lines are perfectly straight through the earth. So usually like a seam agate version or something. Um, anyway, fortification. So that's, you can see the growth rings essentially. It's almost like a tree going in reverse. Um, and why I think this it's uh, crystalline when it runs out of uh, why it forms crystals at the end is because it runs out of silica and a lot of these agates I'll show you some really nice photos that I'll edit in I'll show you where you can actually see the silicious solution percolating into the cavity and filling it um, so as a recap of how crystals form this is I'm talking about the silica family right so silica family is things like um, Opals, uh, onyx, obsidian, uh, jasper, agates, chalcedony, which jasper, agates, chalcedony are pretty much the same thing. It's just visual difference again. Um, and when I start talking about these, like, uh, like you get opals, which form an amorphous crystal structure, or obsidian, which is unsorted. Um, and essentially, it's still the same build building blocks, which is why we call them the same family, silica dioxide, right? Same building blocks, except like I was saying, you get a little bit of iron tossed in and it turns purple. If you heat one of these, it turns orange. Um, so citrine is actually the same thing as amethyst, just turns orange. Rose quartz, you get, I think it's manganese and aluminum, right? I'll flip the camera around here. We'll look at some rose quartz. Now, this has just been like cut to a point. Rose quartz... There is a version with actual crystal structure, but it is incredibly rare. Most of what you'll see is just blocks, um, gem grade versus low grade. Uh, there's other crystals that form within a cavity as well. Lots of the calcite family, so apophyllites that we see out of India, um, calcites out of like Morocco or Mexico, um, barites would too. Uh, what would be another version? Um, There's so, so many, but I know calcite family, but most are essentially forming that way where there's a cavity for them to grow within. Um, and eventually it'll either fill the whole cavity completely or leave us with a pocket, right? Which when we're mining, we say we found a crystal pocket, uh, which is basically like a giant geode in the earth. And then, um, like I said, the other ones, like the feldspar family, which would be like sunstones, for example, if you go dig these in Oregon, I'm seeing the polished ones right here. So if you notice sunstones, they're like uh, little chips. And what's happened is the lava flows. And uh, to give you a better example of this, lava flowed and uh, immediately as it was cooling, these crystal chips solidified out and they were scattered um, randomly throughout that lava flow. And eventually the earth eroded away all the host rock, the basalt lava, and the feldspar, which was a harder stone, resisted the weathering. And so it just all ended up in the sand. Um, so you walk around in the desert and just pluck them out of the sand because they're the only thing that resists that weather. Did that answer your question? I think so. It's pretty thorough. Okay. <laughs> there you go. That's how crystals form. Thanks, man. Yeah. Give us a follow.